It's eight minutes past eight now. Well, few topics concerning children's health arouse more controversy than attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. I'll come over here. <laughs> Well, ADHD or not, we've all been there. And here's what you need to know about ADHD. 7% of Australian children have been diagnosed with ADHD. Boys are three times more likely to suffer the condition. The symptoms usually occur in early childhood. For three quarters of sufferers, the symptoms continue into adulthood. And treatment usually involves medication and counselling. But Professor Robert Spillane claims it's all a myth. And he joins me now, Professor Spillane. Good to see you this morning. Um, you say ADHD is a myth. You're not a medical practitioner. What basis do you use to, to say that ADHD is a myth? Well, ADHD was uh, invented. Uh, real illnesses are discovered. And it was invented by psychiatrists. And psychologists, of which I am one, uh, have tended to become very much involved, as indeed have paediatricians, neurologists, general practitioners. So the general view is that it's an illness and I claim it isn't an illness. So what do you claim it is? Well it isn't anything um, except childhood having now become an illness itself. So are you, are you saying that it's imagined or the fact that you can't measure it in any medical form that's the reason why it's a myth? Well illnesses are diagnosed on the basis of medical signs no ADHD case is ever diagnosed on the basis of a medical sign. It's diagnosed on the basis of behaviour, and especially behaviour that annoys or upsets parents or teachers. On, on that basis, would you say that depression is also a myth? Depression is very difficult to uh, distinguish from being simply unhappy. It's perhaps a severe case of unhappiness. Now, we normally don't call unhappiness an illness, but the trend since the 1980s has been to medicalise what are essentially moral dilemmas. Many people who are depressed are facing a moral dilemma. Will I or will I not leave a bad marriage, for example? Now, this has mm -hmm. nothing to do with medicine and certainly nothing to do with drugs. OK, well, if you don't believe in ADHD, there are a lot of kids who are on drugs and being treated for ADHD. Are you saying they're on drugs that they shouldn't be on? Indeed. There are over 20 million children worldwide that are taking um, amphetamine for what I'm claiming is an imaginary condition. Uh, not only are the drugs not indicated, uh, there isn't actually any illness to treat. That's the whole argument. So the point of drugging children um, is essentially a form of performance enhancement. Trouble is, it does not enhance academic performance. So why then do you think that so many children are being diagnosed by medical practitioners in, in growing numbers, apparently, they're being diagnosed as having ADHD? Well, when it was invented and voted into existence in 1987, within six months in America, half a million children were immediately diagnosed with this illness and then put on drugs. I think part of the problem is that teachers are finding it increasingly difficult to discipline children at school. Certainly these drugs make the children more compliant. I think parents are often wanting a quick fix. Probably the dilemma is more finding stimulation for children rather than drugging them. And so a combination of problems at school, problems at home, children who are literally stimulation hungry are essentially being treated as sick and drugged. There are plenty of people who say that kids are overstimulated these days though. Well, some may be, but sitting in front of a computer all day is hardly overstimulation. I think stimulation means also that they want variety, they want novelty, they want challenge. In many cases, parents are absent. In many cases, they're not doing enough physical exercise. In many cases, they're in front of a computer all day. Often, they find school boring, teachers boring, they want stimulation. The tendency now is simply to label them and say, you are difficult to manage, you are too demanding, you are upsetting, we'll call you sick and we'll give you drugs. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's a lot of parents at home at the moment whose children have been diagnosed with ADHD and would say that they have tried absolutely everything with their child 
to make them well and it wasn't until the child was diagnosed and proper treatment came their way, what they believed to be proper treatment, and all of a sudden they had their child back. What would you say to them? Good parents. What I would say is that um, the history of humanity tells us that children are often difficult, um, some are demanding, some want more stimulation than others, but to understand a child's problems is not necessarily to conclude that they're ill, rather to look at the relationships that they have with parents, with teachers, with siblings and with other friends. And as a psychologist, I'm very committed to the view that so many of these problems are actually problems of relationships between people, not illnesses. The fact that parents find the children easier to manage when they're on drugs is simply a way of saying that drugs make children more compliant. But there's a side effect, and a very serious one. So, so what is your advice to parents of children if, if they don't want them to take drugs, how should it be treated? Well, there's nothing to treat. You see, this is the problem. But are you saying talking. the problem is with the parent? No, I'm not. I'm saying that there is a tendency now to label children's behaviour, which was originally called childhood behaviour, as an illness. And we're doing this right across the board. So to assume immediately that a child who is argumentative, who doesn't do his homework, yep is likely to interrupt a conversation, which are all typical characteristics of children. Well, to argue that they're illnesses and then to drug them is, to my mind, totally unwarranted. Well, unfortunately, I am going to have to interrupt this conversation, uh, but I have no doubt the conversation will continue on the emails this morning. So, Professor, thanks very much for your time this morning. And if you have an opinion on the Professor's opinion, we'd love to hear from you today at 9.com.au. Georgie? Yeah, it is interesting stuff. Thank you very much, Lisa.